Coming up on First at Four, learning to drive can be a struggle for Kentucky students. How some new tech is helping to get them ready for the road. Plus, President Biden will address the nation tonight for the first time since dropping out of the presidential race. What he's expected to say. And a few renegade showers are being picked up on live pinpoint Doppler radar. There is a break in the rain chances, and I'll tell you when in a few minutes. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at Four, one school district is now equipped with two simulators helping students prepare for the real world. WIMT's Chandler Wilcox tells us how this will benefit students. Before they take a car in and out of this parking lot, Perry Central students can now practice their driving skills. School administrators purchased two driving simulators, one for Perry County Central High School and another for Buckhorn School. The purchase was made through a grant approved by the Kentucky Department of Education. Samantha Turner, who is the employment specialist for Perry Central's Community Work Transition Program, says driving can be a hurdle for students preparing for life after school. Oftentimes we see that students struggle with um, just whether it be the courage, uh, just having the guts to get in the car and try it. Uh, regardless of what people think, sometimes kids are wanting to be drove around their whole lives. So with this, we're able to kind of uh, mend that bridge. Students can log the results and also change settings. Turner says the simulator also has settings that can be geared towards students with disabilities. In Perry County, Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Coming up at 6, we'll see the different settings on the simulator and hear more about how it can benefit students. Officials at Alice Lloyd College in Knott County are gearing up to welcome students back to campus soon. On August 20th, classes at the college will begin. Crews are currently wrapping up construction projects on campus, some of which were started as a result of the flood two years ago. Inside the buildings, classrooms are getting updated as well. Provost Dr. Charles Marshall says the new technology will add to students' academic experience. All classrooms that we have on campus this year have a brand new computer in the classroom, and that will enhance the technology inside the classroom uh, to, to match the improvements that we have on the outside. Dr. Marshall added that all incoming students will receive an iPad. He says new technology will allow them to access additional resources that the school provides. We'll have more tonight at 6 about the campus building back from the July 2022 flood. Well, as advertised, we have rain pushing its way through portions of eastern Kentucky and temperatures today again. We're in the 70s and 80s. Here's the latest with live pinpoint Doppler radar right now, and we'll go ahead and pinpoint a couple of locations over towards the uh, Jackson area, seeing some rain, and then over towards portions of Pike County, uh, just to the north and west of Pikeville, and then to the east of Pikeville, seeing uh, some heavy rain. No lightning is being picked up with these cells at this time, but we pull out and take a look here at the bigger picture. You can see a line of showers and thunderstorms uh, just to the south of the viewing area towards portions of Tennessee, and you can kind of see how that's going to clip portions of eastern Kentucky as we go into the next couple hours. We find temperatures right now in the 70s and 80s, upper 70s towards Jackson as well as Hazard, 81 Jonesville, 83 Manchester, 81 London, Somerset. Good afternoon to you guys. You're at 84. Same story in Monticello. Now the next 12 hours, Keeps temperatures around 77 by 9 p.m. By the time you join us tonight at 11, we'll be around 75, 72 by the 5 o'clock hour. When you wake up in the morning, we'll see temperatures in the 60s and low 70s. Now, there's a break in the rain chance, and we'll talk about that in the first alert forecast in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Eric, thank you. President Joe Biden will address the nation tonight for the first time since dropping out of the 2024 presidential race and endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris. For more on what to expect tonight, here is WIMT Washington correspondent Ashanti Ford. The president returned to the nation's capital Tuesday after spending several days at home recovering from COVID. Now tonight, he's promised to deliver his reason for dropping out of the race, saying, and I quote, I will address the nation from the Oval Office on what lies ahead and how I will finish the job for the American people. Pressure from the Democratic Party for President Biden to drop out of the race intensified after his poor performance in the June 27th debate against his then opponent, former President Donald Trump. 
The president dropped out of the race on Sunday, endorsed VP Kamala Harris, and then virtually attended her first speech as the presumptive Democratic nominee from his headquarters in Wilmington. Now, Harris hit the campaign trail Tuesday in Battleground State, Wisconsin. Now, President Biden is the first sitting president to not seek re-election since Lyndon B. Johnson back in 1968. Reporting from the nation's capital, I'm Ashanti Ford. And of course, you can see the president's address tonight at 8 here on WIMT. More people across the nation are showing interest in Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir. It comes during speculation he could potentially be Kamala Harris's running mate. Google searches have jumped as people try to find out more about Bashir. He's also made several appearances on national news programs. Now, ABC is reporting the governor has been asked to submit vetting materials for vice president. Others who have reportedly been asked include Arizona Senator Mark Kelly and Governors Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania and Roy Cooper of North Carolina. The vice presidential pick is unlikely to be finalized by August 7th, which is a tentative date set to gather some state's certified nominees before the Democratic National Convention. A conservative legal group is trying to end protections for gay marriage, and they are doing it in Kentucky. The Liberty Council is filing an appeal on behalf of Kim Davis. The former Rowan County clerk made national headlines in 2015 for refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. A jury found she violated their constitutional rights. The new appeal makes three arguments. First, that the jury was wrong. Second, that Davis was entitled to a religious accommodation. And third, that the case that made same-sex marriage legal nationwide should be overturned. Kentucky State Police credit TikTok for helping them catch two people with hundreds of pounds of marijuana. State Police have been keeping an eye on James and Tara Lyles since February when they got a tip they were selling large amounts of marijuana and THC products. The two are accused of posting TikTok videos of themselves making marijuana products inside a warehouse. An undercover officer met up with Tara Lyles for a staged buy and found out where their facilities were. Police then searched the warehouse and found 218 pounds of marijuana inside worth more than $440,000. Both now face drug charges. Coming up on First at Four, the Israeli Prime Minister is in Washington today hoping to bolster U.S. support for the war against Hamas, but some lawmakers are sending a message of their own. And in the world of weather, we're seeing a mixture of sun and clouds and even some rain being picked up on live pinpoint Doppler radar. We'll talk about that coming up in a few minutes. Stay with us.